Hey, it's Code Vimber. This month I conducted various audio kit experiments and in this video I'm going to share with you all the cool things I learned along the way. Things like making AUV3s, samplers, sequencers, a synth, arpeggiators, and much more. First a bit of housekeeping, AudioKit is an open source framework for making audio apps on iOS. On my YouTube channel, I have various tutorials on making instruments or using effects, but for these experiments, I wanted to discover the parts of AudioKit I'd yet to explore. The code for these experiments is up on GitHub, so I'm gonna keep this part a non-technical walkthrough. Basically, I just wanna show you some of the things that you can make using AudioKit. And as always, links to everything will be in the description. All right, let's jump into the experiments. First up, we have a sound font player, and this is using Apple Sampler to play a basic sound font file. There are two samplers inside of AudioKit. There is the Done Sampler, which is just called Sampler, that uses SFCs, and then there's this sampler, Apple Sampler, which is built on top of Apple's own AV Audio Unit Sampler. This one can play AU presets, EXS files, raw audio files, and sound fonts like this. In the cookbook, there's an example of playing EXS files, which is the same implementation of playing AU preset files, but there really wasn't one for sound fonts, so that's what I wanted to do here. The thing that's unique about playing back sound fonts is that they have different banks and presets. I did see there are some other open source solutions for being able to scrape the metadata and go between different banks and presets, but I haven't added it here. That might be something I look more into in the future. Additional things about this example, on the bottom we are using the AudioKit keyboard package, and on the top we have an FFT View Visualizer by Matt Pfeiffer that we're actually going to play around with more in the next example. The next two experiments are visualizers. One is a circular visualizer and the other one is linear. And both of these are custom implementations of that FFT view example from the sound font player. Basically in that FFT view class, there is an array of amplitudes and we can use those values to construct our view however we want. This experiment could be expanded. I like the idea of giving people the ability to upload their own music and maybe be able to export their own visualizations. And this is a good starting point for something like that. On to the next experiment, this was a fun one. It's using Sprite Kit and Audio Kit together. Basically, whenever a collision is happening, we're playing a sound inside of Audio Kit. This is inspired by games like Electroplankton and also the new AUV3 Bounce Bud by Jim Olke. I think there's a lot of cool ideas that could be explored with this medium. Next, we have a sound recording sampler, and this one is really cool. Hello. In essence here we have a node recorder and after we've recorded that sound we dynamically are making an AU preset file to play with Apple Sampler. The little visualization down there of the waveform that comes from AudioKit's new waveform package. And yeah, there's a lot of directions you could go from here but it would still take quite a bit of work to tap into things like the envelope in the Apple Sampler, uh, how to store these files permanently. Again, it's just a prototype but it's got a lot of potential. Next we have an example of making an LFO using a timer. Now this one is, uh, this is probably my junkiest experiment. There's not a built-in mechanism for LFOs in AudioKit, so I tried using a timer. I think what I might use instead in the future is just the sequencer and have a very short time duration and then just be updating it each tick as opposed to using a timer. Cause I'm not sure how well this timer would work if you're doing it in an offline render mode. But I had an idea, I made it, let's move on. All right, so this next one, we're using Apple Sampler to play an AU preset file, but we are finding some of the hidden parameters of AU Sampler. And this comes from a blog post. I talk more about the background on this in the YouTube short. By the way, I did do YouTube shorts of each of these experiments, so I'll leave links to those in the description. If you start working with Apple Sampler and you're just banging your head against the wall about getting envelopes to work, here's a solution you can use. Next is the Dunn Sampler, and this is the first time I've actually taken a close look at it. And I was blown away by how many parameters you have to edit just straight out of the box. So all of these knobs, those just come from looking at all of the built-in parameters on Dunn Sampler.
Dunn Sampler, of course, is the sampler of choice by AudioKit Pro. Originally, they were using Apple Sampler, but then switched over to this one. I'll be honest, at this point, I don't know going forward if I'm going to use Apple Sampler or this sampler. There are pros and cons to both. I mean, this one is set up for you and works just straight out of the box, but it's not built by Apple, so it might not be supported as much into the future unless some AudioKit contributor is going to continue to update it, but there, there are no guarantees. There's also no guarantee that Apple is going to keep theirs around. And these are things that you seriously need to consider whenever you're creating an instrument app because the technology behind it is not always going to be there. It's going to change. Uh, previously, I was using an OpenAL library for some of the instruments apps I put out. It got deprecated. I didn't know what the hell I was doing, so I wasn't able to update it. So I'm careful not to make that same mistake again, and I also don't want to lead people down a path that's going to be a dead end. But... <laughs> All of that aside, this works remarkably well right now with AudioKit 5 and in iOS 17. All of the headaches with Apple Sampler are not the headaches here. And really the only shortcoming I found with this is there's not a lot of documentation on how different things work together like filter cutoff, filter strength, key tracking. While the names are intuitive, the values that they return are not always. Which actually leads to another plus of the Dunn Sampler. We can actually edit these things inside of AudioKit, whereas Apple Sampler, that's built on top of Apple stuff and that's closed source. So yeah, lots to think about. For the next experiment, staying inside of the Dunn Audio Kit package is the Synth class. This is currently the only polyphonic synth inside of AudioKit, although there is an example inside of the cookbook for using regular oscillators and adding them all together. The default sounds for this synth are not great because basically it's playing a whole bunch of oscillators all at once, including a drawbar organ. But if you copy over a local copy of the Dunn Audio Kit package, then you can edit those voices. There's not a way to edit them from the Swift side, so you have to go into the C++ stuff. But that's really not too tricky. What would be tricky is dynamically changing the voices after you've already initiated the class. Maybe that's a feature that could be added somewhere down the road, but as for now, one thing that you can create are 10 stack saw waves, and it just sounds awesome. Maybe you could sample that and then play it back with the Dunn Sampler. All right, next we have an arpeggiator, and this is a pretty basic example. Basically, we're just collecting an array of notes, and then we're playing through them using a sequencer. But this time, rather than using the Apple sequencer, I'm using AudioKit sequencer called Sequencer. <laughs> In the short time that I've used AudioKit Sequencer, I found that it works really well, and it doesn't have those same pitfalls that we have with Apple Sequencer. Mainly that it doesn't work inside of AUV3 because it requires a MIDI endpoint reference, and it stutters every time that you restart the sequence. Kind of a big deal for a sequencer. So AudioKit Sequencer is the one that I'm probably going to use going forward, but I still have Apple Sequencer as a fallback should anything get deprecated in the future. All right, and on to our last two examples, and these ones are using AUV3s. These two examples that are built in are not AUV3s, they're just examples to try and show what is happening on the AUV3 side. This first one is a MIDI generator that is playing a random note. Here I'm using the sequencer class once again to play those notes, but on the AUV3 side I'm using the musical context block to get the tempo and beat from the host. This cello sound is actually just a sawtooth wave being played through Apple Sampler with a low pass filter and a little bit of vibrato. I think it's purdy. And our final experiment is an AUV3 effect, and I'm using a hack for this one where we are just passing one of AudioKit's node's underlying audio units. The proper way to make an AUV3 effect is to create a new target inside of your project for an audio unit extension, and then it creates just a basic gain AUV3 for you. And from there, you can go into the kernel and start to edit it and have basically any sort of DSP you want. I'm making that sound easy, but it's not, so that's why this hack is so useful. 
The catch is editing things from inside of the sound pipe package is going to be limited, so you could use this just as a starting point for understanding how to make AUV3 effects. But ultimately, you probably want to be creating your own classes. Those classes could be just copying the code that's already in AudioKit and then expanding from there. Or you could go full on big brain and start writing your own custom DSP. Don't expect me to be doing that though. And that's it. Hopefully you found some of these experiments helpful and you can add them to your Batman tool belt. Bat belt? So what's next? Well, I'm going to be using some of this stuff in my own apps and hopefully you can as well, or at least you now have a better understanding of some of the things you can build with AudioKit. While I was building these experiments, I found a couple of things in AudioKit that I want to fix or add to the cookbook, so I'm probably going to be doing that in these coming weeks. Overall, I think this has been a great experience. I learned a lot of new stuff about AudioKit. I don't think I would try and compact everything into the one minute YouTube short tutorials next time. Maybe just have like a full roundup, just like this video would be the only thing. Anyways, you've heard my voice enough for one day, so unless you haven't, in which case, go watch another video on my channel. Thanks for watching, be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.